All right, hey guys, here we are, hole number one, Wolf Creek par five. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about is using your fairway to your advantage. So you'll see a huge downslope here. Look at my ball trail if I land right here. Now, this is probably the hardest wind uh, you could have probably got to land it right here. So it's not going to be the easiest shot to do. It's going to take you some practice and dependent upon your club as well. But what I'm going to do is we're going to just kind of counter this a little bit. But look, look as I go into overpower what happens to that ball guide. It's really not stretched out much at all. Anywhere. So, But look at this. It's the farthest. So in the event that you can land right on this spot specifically, look how much rollout I get. We'll be 300 plus with just about any wind, especially if we use wind reduction balls. To get that wind down to a five or less, you can pretty much keep this um, above 300 with just about any wind. Now, I am going to pull up a grid here. Of course, not absolutely net mandatory, but uh, will just help us to uh, you know, hopefully... Visually, it'll help you see what I'm about to do because this is a pretty hard concept to do. It's kind of like the last hole where I just did the Wolf Creek par three. It's kind of like this. You have to really, I, I, I play this with the Pro D pretty close to, I mean, you can use your, your wind. I do do pretty close to that max adjustment there with this Pro D um, because there's some elevation drop off. In this case, um, you know, I, I'm probably going to stay right around there, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, uh, and if the wind would have been a little bit different, or I wouldn't have been pulling down quite so low, you can see how low I'm pulling down here. If you can see how low the ground is from where I started. Now, this is where the adjustment itself gets difficult. And this is one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this is because what you're going to see is it's going to land short. I can guarantee you that it's going to land short on me. So I'm going to need to go this way to keep this, to actually land on, on, up on this blue line. So the only way it's going to land up here is if I pull down forward. And how much? Uh, it's, it's really feel more than anything. Uh, it's not an exact science. It's really dependent upon how much I dropped off. So you can see going from here to over here, it's a pretty substantial drop off, more so than most greens. So I went about a ring and a half, and let's just see how this looks. Now I want you to really focus on where this ball lands, because I might not have nailed it perfect, because this is probably one of the toughest wins that you could have drew to, to, to pull off this shot. And you can see I actually over pulled it just a little bit because I wanted to be safe rather than sorry. But let's just see how much rollout we get. We almost got it to 300. If we would have actually landed that just a tad bit shorter. So a ring and a half there or a ring and a third there was a little bit heavy. I typically do go about one. But I wanted to be very gentle with that. And here's the reason why. Say I'm pulling down this way. I feel safer. When I'm pulling down here, I'm feeling a little bit more hesitant. Because one of the things that you can see happening is I'm not adding any depth, like any length, to where I'm pulling, but up here I am. So the fact that I'm adding length uh, typically will keep it from short landing as much, whereas over here, you know, it, it could be suspect. But let's just see what we're looking at here and as to why you want to get it up here. So you'll see you can, you can typically get this much better in range and we'll be able to, you guys know this back pin location, we'll be able to go at this one with pretty much any wind when you get your tee shot out here. So that's why it's so critical to get that off the tee like that. Now here you can see we're a little bit in between clubs. There's a couple different ways we can go about this. We can go Pegasus. We can go Lightning Rod. Uh, both are kind of have their own difficulties. Um, you're going to be landing on the face considerably with lightning rod. Now, I do like to go lightning rod to the back pin, to the middle pin, but this is probably the one pin where let's just go Pegasus. So let me just go ahead and put a four on. Why not? Seems like an appropriate time, but I'm going to probably have to set my bag up that way. 
So here you can see, getting the four on, we got a Pro D on. So seven, nine, we're gonna pretty much use max adjustment here. Max is saying five some. So I got a couple options here. I can land on this fairway and do the do the precise ring count. Or alternatively, I can go overpower and land on the green. I wouldn't say one is more right than the other. Because this is going to be a pretty hard shot no matter what you do. So here you can see I got maybe five, six bars on. We're going to use that max number, which is five, five, three. And other than that, we're going to, this is also an uphill approach. So since it's uphill, we're going to change our side spin. So when I do uphill approaches, what I'll do is I'll counter spin. And, you know, since it's kind of to the side mostly, I'm only going to go about two, two and a half bars. You can see I've altered that from zero to almost three bars here. I'm only using the X component here for this adjustment. But let's just see how this looks in. And what, what, what I try to do is try to get those bounces to, to land very forward. So let's see if I can do that here. And this is 553. Five, I think should be in the ballpark. This isn't going to be the most holdable shot here. So... All we're really trying to do when we kind of get in between clubs like this is just get this up good. But watch these bounces. Here you can see, you see how everything's still going to the left? It's because of that uphill slope. So as you can see, I put just a hair too much backspin. But you can see how I was trying to straighten out the line. And that's what I was doing with that side spin. I was trying to straighten it out as most as possible and still get it online. As you can see, if I would have took maybe one bar less of backspin, it would have actually shot up right towards the pin, and still had a chance to go in. So do keep all those tips in mind. Good luck. Very difficult hole. Uh, you know, this course in general, a lot of elevation. So anytime that you have these uphill approaches, you'll want to be thinking about what I just did there with that side spin to try to counter it. And the and this Wolf Creek par 3 plus the par 5, both of them in this set are going to be, uh, you know, play like this pretty regularly. So good luck there, and I will see you guys on the next one.